what's going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the swift ui x package for your swift ui apps basically uh, here we are on their uh, github repo but basically this is a framework that really extends swift ui's functionality and brings a lot of things that are in ui kit to swift ui um, you know, really having uh, you not making sure you don't have to go and write these with UIV representable yourself. So here's a list of some of the things they bring. So, you know, you've got link presentation views, you've got activity indicators, you know, different effect views, even like collection views and whatnot. So we'll take a look at integrating this and using it. It really speeds up the development of SwiftUI applications and um, it's actually fairly well built and put together. So I super enjoy using it personally. So. If that all sounds good, make sure you drop a like down below before we get started. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and you're into iOS, hit subscribe while you're at it. Let's get into the video. All right, we're gonna start by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template under iOS, and let's go ahead and call this project Swift UI Secrets. Let's go and change the interface and lifecycle both to Swift UI, and of course, keep your language as Swift. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. We'll toss it onto our desktop. And first things first, we're gonna go ahead and hit resume in our preview here since it likes to take its time and come up. And we'll also change the preview device to a 12 Pro Max while we're at it. Next up, we wanna actually bring in SwiftUI X. So here I am on the GitHub repo page for it. And there's a ton of information here and all the components it provides. Um, but we're going to bring it in via Swift Package Manager. So all you need to do is copy the URL up here. And back over here in your project, you can go ahead and go to File. And at the bottom here, we should have Swift Packages. And you want to go ahead and in here hit Add Package Dependency. From there, you can go ahead and paste in that GitHub URL. And you can just hit Continue, Continue. It'll ask you to validate the version. And then it'll go ahead and download the package. So it's a little large. The first time it might take a couple seconds. Um, there it goes. Actually, it was fairly quick for me at least. But go ahead and bring that in and hit Command B. And after you bring it in, make sure everything is still compiling and good to go. So looking pretty good. Let's hit resume over here in the, um, in the preview. Let's go ahead and stop build, whatever reason that is taking super long. Everything should be compiling and looking good. So if we come back here to the documentation, you'll see that basically any type of UI component that is not supported, SwiftUI X will actually give to you quote unquote for free. So let's say you wanted to have a LP link view, which is a link preview view. Um, if you wanted to build that yourself right now, you would need to wrap it in, uh, you know, UI view representable um, or something like that. So let's go ahead and change uh, the preview here to be dark. Now let's go ahead and use some of these components and really exemplify why this, uh, this particular package is pretty magical um, with some of the shortcomings that SwiftUI has today. So we're gonna add a navigation view with a vertical stack. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a title of SwiftUI X. And let's go ahead and try to use some of these. So if we type in LP link view, and before we do that, it would probably be fairly smart to bring in that uh, framework that we just brought in via SPM. And now let's try LP link view. Let's try building first. Sometimes it needs to get its life together. All right. And let's see, let's see. If I go back here, let's see if they call this something else. So looks like they've actually called it just a link view, I would imagine, instead of LP um, with kind of naming convention. So if we type in link preview or presentation view, um, and there's also a presentation link view, let's go ahead and do this. And you can open up the parentheses here. You can see that you can literally pass in metadata um, or a URL directly. Let's just go with the URL. And I'm going to pass in um, any type of URL. So let's go ahead and type in, um, let's do apple.com because we are in fact building for Apple's platform. And let's go ahead and just put an exclamation mark at the end there to force on wrap it. I'm also going to close this left panel here so we have some more coding room. And let's go ahead and hit resume. And let's see if our preview uh, likes to cooperate with rendering some of these out. So there is uh, that view already. You can see that it's taking up uh, the entirety of the 
height. So let's go ahead and actually give this a fixed frame. And let's see, frame, and we're gonna give it a frame with a width and a height. So let's go ahead and say 200 uh, by 200. And we'll see it be much smaller now. And let me go ahead and give this a run uh, on the device itself. Um, and that way we should be able to get the image. Some of these link previews don't actually have images, but I have a hunch the preview probably won't play super nice with it. So let's go ahead and just wait for this guy to boot up. And while it's doing that, let's take a look at what else we've got here so we can uh, test out some of these other ones. So um, the blur effect is pretty popular. UI text fields, you know, you might want to use um, scroll view and table views are not that important anymore since they're kind of supported first party. Um, but the ones that I want to, the one that I want to call out in particular is UI activity indicator view. And the Swift UI X version of it is a activity indicator. And this one to get out of the box is uh, kind of a pain. So here is actually the link preview view. So if you run it on a device, you'll see that it actually gives you the icon also. Um, but let's do that activity indicator view. So right below this link presentation view, we're going to do an activity uh, indicator view. And we can go ahead and open this up. And I believe this has a uh, modifier of animating on it. Let's see, there's animating, there's animation. Let's go back to the docs here. Let's take a look at what this activity indicator gives us. So there's animated true and you can say style large. So I'm gonna cheat and copy and paste those because that's what everyone does secretly. And let's take a look at uh, what this looks like. So let's see if our preview like surrender it. We might need to jump to our live preview or the device to get it to be a little nicer, but there's our spinner right below it. And let me go ahead and hit a live preview here. And let's see if this will play nicely with um, actually spinning um, in the live preview. Okay, cool, look at that. So actually we don't even need the device. So not only do we get the, the presentation view, but we also get the spinner. So the takeaway here is the SwiftUI X library is actually really great for you know, creating different components that you might you know, know and love from the UI kit, but aren't really supported in uh, SwiftUI just yet. Or maybe if, you, if they are supported, it might be more work, right? So let's say you wanted to go ahead and add a, um, let's see, we've got table view, text field, Let's say you wanted to add a blur effect view right here. You can go ahead and see right here that this is a blur effect view. So let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna put this whole thing in a Z stack like so. And what we'll go ahead and do is we're gonna put a blur effect on top of all of this. So we can go ahead and say this is a blur effect view and you can go ahead and create it and you can take a style and a content view builder, which is pretty cool. So for the style here, we can actually go ahead and just pass in um, the, you know, any type of style here. So let's go ahead and do light. I believe that's one of them. And the content here, we can actually pass in, uh, I believe content that's gonna be underneath the blur. However, uh, I need to double check. So let's go ahead and see UI blur effect view dot style. And let's go ahead and stick with, let's go with light. Looks like it was complaining for whatever reason. And I'm just gonna add a text in here and say, hello, blur. And let's see what that does for us. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look over here. So you can see that this blur effect is completely overlapping uh, all the other content as we would expect, because it's the topmost item in the uh, actual uh, Z stack. It looks like you can also throw all of this content inside of this uh, inner view builder for this blur. And uh, in, in this case, what it's gonna do is it'll put this stuff on top of the blur. So you actually don't need to deal with, you know, layering the stuff in the Z stack. So this is all the stuff below it, and this is the stuff on top of it. So um, pretty darn cool. So I guess I'll, I'll stop boring you guys at that point. Um, take a look at, uh, you know, what's provided here and, you know, how it's uh, inter integrated into Swift. I'm sure the SwiftUI framework when SwiftUI 3 comes out um, this year, 2021, will probably go ahead and extend a lot of this functionality. But for the time being, um, I know personally, at least this has been super helpful in speeding up development of apps in SwiftUI. Um, and also it's a lot, I mean, basically when you do it yourself, you need to wrap this stuff in UI view representable or view controller representable. So having it done, um, you know, for you in this framework is really helpful. And 
The other thing I'll add is um, the list that they have shown here for contents is um, not completed. So like they, there are other things that this supports. So if you go to the repository wiki that it's telling you, you can actually go through the full complete list of things that are supported uh, on the right hand side. So there are things like, you know, uh, pagination, text, dynamic text, you know, geometry, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, definitely take a peek through the docs as well. So that's all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, definitely drop a like down below. Hit subscribe while you're at it if you haven't done so already. And comment and let me know, are you guys using SwiftUI or do you still prefer UIKit? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.